for this project, I'm gonna make these foot pegs shorter. They stick out way too far. I'm gonna flip them over and put them on the inside. So, right here, I've taken a hacksaw and I am marking my cut. I am gonna cut it right where these ribs are. It's a very convenient mark here to cut on and I'm gonna make the pegs shorter so that it'll fit inside here. Right now, they're too long. With that done, we've cut the end of the peg off. Nice clean cut. Now, we need to switch the peg around to the inside. Coming around to the other side of the bike, same thing on this side, cut the foot peg off, basically leaving two of the grooves showing there. And again, I used them as cut marks. So it makes a nice clean finish. The next step in our retrofit here is to remove the foot pegs by taking the bolt out. So I have an Allen wrench here, and this uses a little cap screw. Anyway, that will allow the foot peg to come off the end, and we're going to switch it around. So, one of the changes here is in the bolt. Get this out here. The idea is to switch the bolt, the peg to the inside and get it right up against the frame. And it's gonna look like that. This part is gonna be a little awkward. It has a little bit of a grip, which is good because that'll dig into the boot there. That part. Long story why it's like that. But what we need to do now is <laughs> Unfortunately, the bolt has to go in from the back side of the mount, so that's going to be a little hard to get in here to tighten this up. The other thing to show down here is that because we're going to mount things backwards, the bolt that came with the foot peg is a little bit shorter. Because this is the threaded length here and we're going to put the peg on the other side I want a slightly longer bolt so I have more threaded area here so it's a little more secure okay so this is how I get the wrench behind the foot peg I take the bolt off of down here and I take the bracket off and then we can get to the back where the bolt is down there and then we can tighten it with the ratchet so I've got it uh, roughly where I want it, position-wise. The knurls, I rotated a little bit forward. They're not straight up and down because my foot is not level. It's slightly forward, so I rotated it where I want it. And now I'll take the wrench and tighten everything back up. Okay, here's another look. I've sort of got the bolt started by flipping the peg over. So you can see I've got it uh, started out a little bit. I can just see the head of the bolt and I can get a finger in there and sort of hold it and rotate the bolt. But this is really difficult to do. This would make for a really tough trackside repair if you bent a peg or something. But there's not a whole lot of options for doing this. So, like I said, I will take the peg off and then tighten it from the other side. And just for the record, inside the bolt hole, I put green lock Loctite. Not that this bike vibrates at all. Okay, I put the bolt back in, tightened everything up, Loctite everywhere. Now I have a foot peg that's very close to the frame. I need to put some knurling on the outside of this piece so my foot doesn't slip off but that closes the gap and makes the bike more narrow. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then the little gap in here needs a rubber plug, a little block of rubber there to keep everything from folding up and moving. Over to the other side, it is in the same position. No longer sticks out nearly as far as it did. Uh, used to stick out about that far. So we got rid of all that, moved everything tighter against the frame. The other item we have here is the gap between the frame and the peg. So we have about 
three eighths of an inch. Um, Okay, here's a cloak us up of some work I did with the Dremel on the foot peg here. I tried to get some grippiness so my boot doesn't slip off. So I just cut a series of very, very crude grooves into the foot peg. Again, the cylinder here on the end. Uh, I tried to make it a little sharper to grab the boot. Same thing up here. It is better than it was. It's not all smooth. Again. Yeah. This is what it looks like on this side before starting, so I'm just putting some grippage on it, and then the final thing will be put a block back there. Now, the peg still pivots, so what I want to do here is put some rubber between the frame and the foot peg to keep it from moving. So, uh, this is about a half inch thick, I think this rubber pad and what I need to do now is remove the peg or loosen the peg at least and da -da. on the back there that'll allow it to pivot a little bit away from the frame so I can get the rubber down in there you can see on the foot peg the rubber will fit kind of into a corner there and that'll help retain it in place and keep it from moving. And then I'm just going to cut the rubber uh, with a razor blade. This is very, very basic setup. But that's how I'm going to solve the moving foot peg problems so they no longer move. These are really, really short, so there's not a whole lot to get a foot on there. But that's my solution to the foot peg problem. Here's where I've uh, simply taken a razor knife and cut out my rubber block. Boom. Then I will uh, cut it here on the front to finish it up. Okay, I cut the front off the rubber pad and then I'm just gonna tighten the foot peg back up. And that is my uh, Ghetto 2.0 foot peg mod gonna go ride this at the track tomorrow and hopefully have a good day at it. May do something later on with the pegs but uh, that gets me my shorter foot pegs and more ground clearance on the electric bike. One of my concerns with the shortened foot pegs is gonna be with my boot. Here is where the foot peg tends to hit and I have a bit of a blister and so I boot there. So I think that is gonna exacerbate and make this problem worse. Out here at Speed Sports today for the Moto Only Day, I have brought the Grom, which features a new shift lever setup, and the Granger with shortened foot pegs and some mods there, 